We all know that people are getting stressed around everything that's happening in today's societies and things like that. And six months ago, I set out to create a well-being garden and it was sponsored by Miracle Grows Peat-Free Composts. And in that video, I planted up all of the containers and everything else for that. And in today's episode, we're gonna have a little look around the well-being garden. Now it's not finished by a long way, but I think it's going to give you an idea of what's been happening. I'm the only person I know who's got stressed by building a well-being garden. It's quite ironical, really. Anyway, I'm Tony O'Neill, and this is Simplify Gardening. So this is a continuation from the Miracle Grow collaboration that I did with their peat-free composts. And as you can see, Back in the spring, I planted up loads of baskets and tubs and things like that for the well-being garden. And they sat on this patio for a very long time. And um, I have to say that the creation of the well-being garden was a massive undertaking. And I'll speak about that in a moment. But those baskets and pots have all now sort of gone over because obviously we're going into autumn and I would have liked them to, to uh, have gone out in the well-being garden but in this episode we're going to plant some more uh, baskets and things for the garden and you're going to get to see the garden in its more or less finished state but there's still a few jobs to do. So as you're aware, the first thing that we needed to do for the well-being garden was to take down the sheds. Now what I will say is it was a huge job. We didn't realize the amount of rubbish that was in this shed. There's 40 years of hoarding in effect. This is a 22 foot long by 14 foot wide shed. It's a big structure and it was jammed to the rafters. And it took me 12 van loads to the tip to get rid of all of the rubbish that was in there. I was finding newspapers in there from 1979. It's absolutely crazy. So what I will say is we stripped out the shed and then I started taking it down. And I got to the point where the all the walls of the shed were down and all we had left was the shed roof with a couple of posts. And my friend Tony from uh, Little Farmer's Farm came down one day to help me take it down. It was absolutely howling down with rain again that day, which has been typical of the whole summer. And we started taking it down. I got on top and cut it all down away from the shed that it was leaning against with a disc cutter because of all the steel we just couldn't get under the roof there. Once I'd done that, I decided it'd be a great idea to cut all the joists and then fold the shed down. And the first part of that worked really well. And the second part didn't quite go so well. I forgot that we put a prop in the center of the shed and I decided that I was going to knock this one post out and it pivoted on that prop that we forgot to take out and nearly ended up in here. There's Mr. Rowe. He just knocked that stand. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'll just pull that stand out of the way. Oh, Hang on. Hang on, I'm just going to lift the building off Tony. I'm just going to lift the building off Tony. <laughs> And that was when that shed roof ended up across my legs. And you'll see in here now, Tony's <laughs> trying to get this shed roof off me. It was quite funny, no one was hurt, but it could have gone a completely different way and I could have been hurt, but I was more concerned of protecting my polytunnel. Once that was down, I had a massive undertaking. I didn't realize that the base of this shed had been built up quite substantially and we were talking like nearly a foot and a half at least of stone, glass and rubble that had been jammed into the base between some sleepers. So it wasn't just a case of being able to 
get in there with a shovel and scooping it out because it was so compact you just couldn't get a spade into it and then of course I wasn't able to just get my hands in it because the amount of glass that was in it as well there was some huge rocks but eventually we got it all dug out and I dug down enough to start putting in some patio slabs a little bit later on. The next thing we decided to do then was to build a lean-to structure off it that has sliding perspex doors now these sliding perspex doors when it's finished it isn't at the moment but when it's finished it will be cold frames there will be two shells within the cold frames and we can come out to this tunnel straight across and we can put our seedlings in there it's going to give us so much more storage area but it's not finished at the moment we've got to shelve it out and i've also got to put the sides in because they're going to form part of the shed that's behind that we then protected that and the next thing we did was we built the pergola over it and i wasn't able to get some trellis work for the pergola because of the size or the dimensions of the pergola itself so I've had to make that by hand also but the good thing about it is it's really strong it's gonna last so this pergola we've now got a wisteria and a japonica that are gonna grow over it and that'll create some shade here that we can sit in throughout the uh, summer and then at home I had some leftover bricks from when I created my front wall and I've put these on edge I've cemented them in they're not square or level by a long shot but they do the job of holding the the soil back as a as a bed and to be honest with you I quite like the rustic look it's uh, quite nice and then once that's done we planted that up with a load of soil from the potato bucket so we've reused that and we've just enriched this and we've put some normal soil in with it those beds have also been planted with a bag each of tulips and daffodils in each bed so they're going to be absolutely jammed in the spring with tulips and daffodils so hopefully that should look absolutely stunning we then went back to planting so we took out all of the old plants and we went back to planting them autumn plants some winter pansies uh, a japonica we've got some hanging baskets of pansies we've got some wallflowers here and we did manage to keep some of the others and we've got a couple of hanging ivies as well so all in all it's been set up really well and it's taken a long old time in which to get it to this state i'm going to give you a little walk around the the garden now so you can see it as it stands at the moment and tell you what else is left to do and ongoing projects that will happen to it over winter so here is the start of the thing excuse all this rubbish this is all part of taking that shed down which I haven't disposed of yet but as you can see the trellis is here um, so how this has worked at the moment this is the sliding doors for um, I've still got in here we put in some rails and we'll put timbers on them and I still have um, some timbers to come down the fronts of the jams there so that's the coal frames and they, they are working really well now we've at the top we've sealed all up there and that's all nice and we've also got in um, some really good two by four perglas we'll probably run some sort of netting or, or mesh across the top of that which will keep the uh, wisteria that is here uh, from uh, from basically dropping down through these beds are the ones that I was talking about we've built them like I said I'm not worried about them being perfectly straight or level or anything like that they've they're there to do a, a purpose and us to hold the soil back I'm no bricklayer uh, we've got a couple of hanging hivies there um, we've hung some hanging baskets and at the moment we've got uh, some pansies in them and then Again, same on this post and the same on this post. Over here, we have another bed and um, this has got like, uh, it's a jasmine 
uh, which is going to grow up and through as well so that should really contrast well with the wisteria on the other side in each of these beds there's a whole bag of daffodil bulbs and tulip bulbs which you will have seen i've got my gunnera here and then we've got just more pansies down here just to sort of like brighten up this area and then on the back here we have in the middle post we've got more pansies uh, another japonica we've got some sickleman um now this is uh part of this barrel so we cut a third off this barrel in the bottom here we've got a little water lily um i've stacked some uh pump not pumpkins uh some squash on there for the time being that board's been cut eventually it'll be painted and screwed down and there'll be a little spigot that'll come up and we'll run a small 12 volt pump in that so we got like a water feature here and um, that will help bring a little bit of uh, noise into the area so over here we have the um, the table and chairs like I said it's not finished yet uh, this has to be painted like the chairs are um, these are out of old wine barrels um, I've got to create the top for to go on the table but at the moment I'm just using it as it is now the the good thing about this is the fact that um, they're comfy to sit in you know it's a decent height they've got somewhere I can sit down so what we're going to be doing behind here is we're gonna um, put off like a little small fence here just a section off that area um, the uh, trellis work is really strong it's two by one i've had to build it myself um, and you could literally claim it so it's going to last it's substantial uh, up against the tunnel as you can see i've got a load of bricks that we uh, took from out here and eventually what i'm thinking of doing is putting some sort of alpine garden out here but that's for another uh, date all these house bricks along the front of the tunnel will eventually be removed and that will be slabbed because I do tend on bringing out some IBCs out here. Uh, we've got some wallflowers and we've got another gunnera in this bucket here. So here again there will be a small little fence to a gate that will go there so this whole section will be sectioned off but essentially this is the well-being garden it's um, you know it's uh, quite a big size now huge amounts of work have gone into it and um, I mean I know the path is a bit rough and ready but this don't forget we're on an allotment for those who don't know what an allotment is it's a community garden that uh, we can rent a space and um, and we can rent that till the day we die as long as we uh, maintain it so I know I can invest in the garden and not have to worry about it being taken off me um, so something like this you know I'm not going to come here by a whole brand new patio and everything else I, I, I've got this these old slabs are already down and those slabs over there I've just taken from my front garden when I've done that and now they're up here as part of this so really the the wall and and the slabs all over there are all left over from the front garden you know um so that's what it's about really and it was just a place that i can create a little bit of water uh, movement now here we can get up some lights and stuff on here off 12 volt solar and this will be a place that we can actually come and relax in the summer when the wisteria and the jasmine grow up over the top of this it'll create some shade it'll be a really nice area the uh, bananas now the likelihood is these are going to they can already see them starting to go um, these are going to die back hopefully we can keep the trunks of them if not um, they will grow back from the base and we will let allow them to grow up and next year they should be much much bigger than they are now but they do suit this area quite well so as you've seen you know we've planted up all of these pots again with the miracle grow peat free compost um, and it's worked well all the pots did really well as you saw uh, they were stacked out here while i was working and what have you um, but what we will likely do 
for next year is run a drip irrigation right through all of these pots and we'll run it through so that um, most of them are, are being watered automatically and it'll just make our life a bit easier but this area is now clean i can get straight from the tunnel here um, and then walk seedlings straight into the cold frames there when this is finished um, so that's the miracle grow well-being garden and uh, like i said it's been an absolutely massive task so guys that's the miracle grow well-being garden and it's don't mind telling you it's been a massive task i have been stressed out massively over it it's not because it was just a huge amount of work but the reality of it is that we've had such bad weather that more often than not i haven't been able to set up the camera to film what i'm doing or the rain is you know there are certain tasks you just can't do in the rain like cementing or uh, building in timbers because you need electrical tools to cut and you know and all of that sort of thing so it's really taken much longer than i wanted i wanted it done within a month and a half and it's been six months but now like i said i can put the finishing touches on it and this will be a nice space i can now come and have a cup of tea when i'm up here gardening I, i'm looking forward because now we'll have a bit of color here there's something i can sit down and have a chat with you in and all in all i think it'll be a really good usable space much better than all the sheds that was originally on this part of the garden we have kept one of the sheds uh, that's going to be a storage shed i'm going to build the sides out on those but all in all the garden is is looking good and again now we'll see just how these pansies and uh, the japonicas and things like that doing all this miracle grow peat free compost but the summer plants did really well in it so i see no problems at all with that anyway guys if you've enjoyed this episode you know what to do you can click the subscribe button up there and if you want to see the original miracle grow uh, plantings and everything else well that's the video you need to watch right there I'm Tony Neal, this is Simplify Gardening, where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember folks, you reap what you sow, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.